croup or laryngotracheal bronchitis is the topic for uh, this uh, video. Uh, so let's get started. Croup is bra basically uh, an inflammatory uh, process. It uh, involves the inflammation of the uh, respiratory uh, tracts, the both the upper and uh, lower. And it's most commonly caused by viruses. And those viruses are parainfluenza. Parainfluenza is by far the most common in its type 1. But there are several others that could cause croup, including respiratory syncytial virus and the influenza viruses, influenza A and B. Now, this uh, croup uh, is basically an inflammation of the larynx, trachea, and the bronchioles, including all the way down to the lung. And let me show you a little diagram that in, in sort of illustrates that. So here we are. This is the larynx, and this is the trachea. And this is a healthy airway right here. As you can see, it's very patent. It's, but then this is croup. Now, notice the swollen tissue here. What it's doing, it's narrowing the airway. And that, that narrowing is what leads to the symptomatology of croup. You can clearly see that there. So what are the symptoms? What are the symptoms that can occur? Well, that swelling that I just showed you in the inflammation in that subglottic region can lead to the following symptoms. And some of these are pretty classic. You've got this barking cough, almost that sounds like a seal. Uh, that's uh, commonly described. You have something called strider. Strider. What is strider? Well, strider basically is a high-pitched wheezing sound uh, resultant from the turbulent airflow in that air airway that's been narrowed. And I wanted to play for you uh, the strider so you can get an idea of what it sounds like. So let's see if this... <laughs> So that's what strider sounds like. Now that sound is happening because the airway is uh, narrowed and uh, or obstructed, and uh, that high-pitched wheezing sound results when a when a child uh, uh, breathes, basically. Now these symptoms most often happen at night, and another thing that's important is as, as a child can often show retractions. Now retractions are these. Uh, where the sternal area um, starts to uh, draw inward, these sternal indrawings, um, indrawings, and I'll show you a picture uh, of a child with those sternal indrawings. The right here, if you can see the middle part there, do you see how that kind of caves in? And that's what we mean by those retractions. All right. So diagnosis. How do you diagnose this? The child comes in and and he's, he or she has got these symptoms. And now just before I get into the diagnosis, uh, fever can occur about 50% of the time. So I just wanted to quickly mention that. Okay, so how do we uh, diagnose uh, croup? Well, other than the symptoms that are pretty classic, like the barking cough and the inspiratory strider that I played a, uh, a recording for you, yeah, you do x-rays of the neck. And when you do the x-rays of the neck, you can actually see that airway narrowing. You remember that airway narrowing that occurs? Well, you can actually see that. And that actually has a special name given to it. It's called steeple sign. I'm assuming because the steeple is, you know, looks like that. And let me, let me show you uh, a chest x-ray. No, sorry, not a chest x-ray, a neck x-ray. And this is the steeple sign. Uh, if you can kind of see, it's got that triangular shape, and that's directly res the result of this type of uh, narrowing of the airway. Um, so that's pretty classic. Other things that you can do in part of the uh, diagnostic workup of a uh, croup are uh, put a pulse ox on the child to monitor their oxygen saturation. Arterial blood gases are uh, important. Because what happens after a while is the child can get tired and the child can eventually, if serious enough, develop hypercapnia. 
And hypercapnia essentially is when the CO2 levels rise, and that needs to be measure, measured. So CO2 levels can need to be measured if the child's condition worsens. And we'll throw in a temperature in there. You know, doesn't hurt. All right, so it's a pretty straightforward a symptom and symptomatology and diagnostic workup. So then how do you treat it? Well, you've diagnosed it. How do you treat it? Well, I'm going to break up the treatment into three parts. Um, the first part is really referring to just an outpatient type of treatment, mild, mild case of croup. The next part is inpatient, and then the third is the severe. I'll talk a little bit about each. Well, the basics of outpatient is really just, you know, bringing down the fever with an antipyretic, you know. Children most commonly are given ibuprofen or acetaminophen. You know, keep the child hydrated, hydration. But outpatient can also involve something that is used known as humidified air. Now, what's this all about? What's humidified air? Well, humidified air is... Uh, can ameliorate the upper airway drying uh, and that's the main reason these these vaporizers or humidifiers are used to uh, prevent the upper airways from drying out and then oral corticosteroids oral corticosteroids now remember the basic fundamental definition of croup or laryngotracheobronchitis is that it's an inflammation so the steroids decrease that inflammation plain and simple now let's get into the inpatient treatment. The child's been um, hospitalized and you want to treat the child. How would you do that? Well, interestingly, two of these are the same. You also give humidified oxygen in the, in the hospital and you also give steroids for the same reasons that I talked about earlier. But another thing that's given in the hospital is something called racemic epinephrine epinephrine. What this acts as is a bronchodilator. And this bronchodilator is given in a nebulized form uh, and can uh, um, definitely uh, offer symptomatic relief and also relieve the fatigue that children can develop when they have to, um, you know, uh, work so hard to breathe during an infection. Now, in the severe, severe uh, uh, cases, most severe cases, where the child is has increasing respiratory distress, uh, fatigue, you know that I talked about, uh, you really need to um, make sure that you check the uh, CO2 levels, and if the CO2 level, the arterial CO2 level is greater than 45, then that means the child isn't indeed uh, getting very tired and just having a very difficult time uh, expelling the CO2. So they need intubation, endotracheal intub intub intubation. And that will give the child a break, basically, uh, and allow the child to get their ABGs, arterial blood gases, down to normal. And uh, one final thing I'd like to mention is antibiotics. Do you use them or do you not use them? Yes or no? Well, viruses are the most common cause of croup, so you don't really need to use an antibiotic. So the answer is no. Antibiotics are rarely used in croup. I just want to finish off the presentation or video with a small vignette. Here we go. Three-year-old boy is brought to the emergency room by his parents in the late evening. He has developed a sudden onset of seal-like barky cough accompanied by clear nasal discharge. His parents became alarmed when he developed strider which persists throughout the trip to the hospital. On examination, he has a seal-like barky cough, an inspiratory strider when at rest, which worsens with agitation. Persistent sternal indrawing are also evident at rest. Well, it helps to have a picture of those indrawings right next to you. Well, this is obviously a clinical vignette describing croup.